Well, looking at other uh, things coming up recently, the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, Matia Kasaija, tabled a supplementary budget request to support the government response to the effects of COVID-19. While the Parliament approved the request on the 7th of April 2020, an amount within this budget was approved to be given to the Members of Parliament and they would receive about 20 million. Now the Civil Society Advocacy Group thinks this was not a move and joining a good move and joining us today on Skype today is Julius Mukonda, the Executive Director of the Civil Society Advocacy Group. Thank you for joining us on NTV at 1. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, when I look at uh, the document that you sent, the, uh, you're raising concerns against this supplementary budget. Why is it that the CS bug is opposed to this money being allocated to the members of parliament? Uh, one is, uh, just straight to the point is, we have reasons why. Number one, uh, it is the wrong. Why is it wrong? It's wrong because by law, we know Parliament is supposed to uh, appropriate according to the Constitution, Act 156. But Article 93 of the same Constitution uh, bars Parliament from incurring a charge on the Constitution Fund uh, if a motion has not been drawn by the executive. So that motion for giving them 10 billion was not by the executive, it was by themselves. Number two, it is wrong because we don't have money. We've just uh, tabled a loan request in the parliament of 1.7 trillion shillings so that we can fight the COVID-19. Secondly, is that the president is asking the friends of Uganda to contribute the money to fight COVID-19. So why would a member of parliament decide to steal money from the consolidated fund for their own benefit? And lastly, for us, it is morally wrong in the times of crisis like this, for you, you think it is an opportunity to make money. If this is not an opportunity, it is a war, it is a crisis. The little, every little resource we need must be taken to the Minister of Health to fight the crisis. So it is wrong in all fronts. I know you already mentioned about the issue to do with seeing different private individuals coming forward to donate and support the government in regards to the fight of COVID-19. And like you said, 1.7 uh, loan, trillion loan request was uh, tabled in Parliament. Where do you think exactly is this money coming from at a point where we think the government has insufficient funds to cater for the COVID-19 effects? I mean, you, and you said it nicely, we are borrowing because we don't have money. Even Uganda Revenue Authority has, made, has, not be, has been making loss, it has not been hitting, hitting the, the target. What does that mean is that even the little money we are borrowing is going to end up in the pockets of MPs. It might not end up helping the ordinary person survive COVID-19. So, Parliament in its wisdom right now, let us forget about the Parliament of yesterday. Let us, let us pretend for one that this Parliament is thinking on behalf of Ugandans and stop this, this madness that we want this money returned back to the Consolidated Fund because we don't have enough money so that this money can help us. We don't have money. This money that is going to be borrowed will end up being utilized by members of Parliament. should be allocated. Yes. Uh, Mr. Julius, once again, I repeat my question. Where do you think, yes. where would you rather we invest this money, the 10 billion? Uh, this money, let me tell you, let me, two statistics. Number one, we have only 48,000 beds in this country instead of 168. So we would have taken this money to buy for us more hospital beds. Number two, 39 districts in this country don't have hospitals. God forbid, if this health crisis increases, how will they manage? Number three, the government has only 181 ambulances. 181 government ambulances. Forget about the private. This money would have gone there. But above all, a combination of Uganda blood transfusion, Uganda various... Uh, research institute and national medical stores 
in the next financial year, 2020-2021, they have a deficit of 10.6 billion. So this money would have gone there. Let us also not forget that Macquarie University requires only 3 billion to produce a testing kit for COVID-19 that will reduce the cost of testing to 4,000 Ukrainian shillings. Surely, we have where this money can go in this time of crisis. And the MPs can have a heart for once in this crisis to let us spend money where it is supposed to be instead of this money going into their pockets. All right, this thank you. Like thank that. you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Julius Mukunde, for joining us on NTV at One and uh, giving us your thoughts on the recent uh, 10 billion that is to be allocated to members of parliament. And now, NTV at One will take a short break, but do not go away.